the attic will exhaust the family in every way, financially, emotionally, spiritually, uh, in every way. And, and, and so that's what it, that's what, that's what I mean when I say they got to get to that place where they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources to identify those that may be struggling with life debilitating addictions. We are a Christ-based organization that works with addicts every day. Brother A, we're going to continue our discussion with relapse prevention and also the tough love aspect, but really let's focus in on the negative consequences and why those consequences are what causes the addict to really seek for help. Right, right, right. So often uh, when it comes to negative consequences, uh, uh, addicts are are experiencing uh, 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 negative consequences as a result of their addiction. And so the negative consequences ac- actually play a significant role in in a couple of different ways. One, it, it should help the, the individual to identify I have a problem and I need help. Uh, and here's here's how that happens. If I'm if, if I'm practicing a particular behavior or, or and I'm experiencing negative negative consequences as a result of it, uh, that it, but I continue to do that behavior. That's an indication that I have a uh, life controlling problem, that right. I have an addiction and that I need help. Um, and the negative consequences should be the vehicle that that leads the person to a place where uh, uh, or, or to the to their bottom, what we might refer to as their bottom. Right. Uh, and no one no, no one knows what our individual bottom is when it comes to addiction. But the negative consequences should play a significant role in uh, the individual getting there in the attic getting there. Right. And no matter what somebody does, there's a consequence. It's either negative or positive. And if somebody's having continually having positive right. consequences, then there's right. no reason for them to realize, Hey, you know, this isn't bad to me. Right. But if they're having that negative, that's when they really need to start looking and realizing, you know what? I need help. Well, you bring up a, an important point when you, when you mention uh, positive consequences, because, um, oftentimes, uh, loved ones, people who care about the, the addict, uh, block them from experiencing their, the negative consequences of their behavior. Right. And when they do that, uh, uh, they, they don't give the individual any reason to want to do anything different because, you know, uh, they're blocking them from having to experience those neg- negative consequences and the negative consequences is a part of them getting to that place where they need help. Right. It's like I have a friend that says they've hit rock bottom and started digging. And sometimes they need to start that digging for them to realize they need to get that help. Right, right, right. And like we've talked before, those, if you're continually bailing somebody out of the issue, you're not helping them, you're enabling them. Correct. If you, if you consistently rescue them from their negative consequences, you're not helping. You're a part of the problem, not a part of the, the solution. That's so right. the, 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 the hard part of that for a lot of uh, loved ones, parents, spouses, is to, uh, is to allow the individual to face their negative consequences. Yeah. And I get it, you know, uh, you love them and you want to help them. But, but it's important from an addiction standpoint that you understand uh, how you need to go about helping them. Right. And helping them is certainly not rescuing them. Helping right. them is not uh, in, uh, enabling them to continue in their behavior. Right. So what I hear you saying is that sometimes helping them will be one of the hardest things that you've ever done. Not from the aspect that you're helping them, but have where you have them more be hands off. And let yeah, them try well, and get that help. Well, and, and, and really, you, you, from a help standpoint... You, no, I said last time in the last podcast, oftentimes what we think is help is not help. Right. You know, and we often look at whether we're doing a good thing. Mm-hmm. We we think it's a good thing to go down to the jail and bail them out. But is it? Right. Is that a good thing? Is that what they need you to do? Right. Um, to come down there and rescue them and get them out time and time and again. Right. Um, it's almost like that scared straight aspect of it where they used to take kids that were going on the wrong yeah, I remember path that program. Yeah. and they would send them to prison and mm-hmm. 
the prisoners or whatever would, would basically scare them straight. It's almost in some aspects come almost like that. They got to face, they got to see that hardship before they actually are willing but to actually gotta, get help because they got to help. They got to want it for themselves too. Well, they gotta they gotta get to this place we often talk about in the recovery community. You got to get to the place where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right. And it, and if if we're blocking them from the negative consequences as a result of their addiction, then we're not allowing them to get to that place where they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right. Um, and and you know un, you have to take that tough love approach in order uh, to not block them from the negative consequences as a, as a result of their addiction. You have to decide, hey, I love them enough not to go down and bail them out. And that right. sounds strange, right? Um, because you think you know, and it, they'll 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 play on that. You know, if, when you tell them, "I'm not coming to bail you out," well, you don't love me. Yeah. Well, well, that's that's the addict m- trying to manipulate, right? Because the addict wants what he wants right. or what she wants when they want it, and so they're gonna play that game with you and and try to put this guilt trip on you. Try to gain your sympathy so you can rescue them again. Right. And I see it all the time uh, with individuals we deal with going through our program, how they ma- manipulate uh, their folks and they manipulate their spouse, even even while they're in, in recovery. Right. You know, uh, because they're uncomfortable with the process and, and they're uncomfortable. Nobody likes change. Right. Um, and so they're struggling with this change. And so th- they're trying to find, you know, the addict always looks for an easier, softer way. And so they, if they're in an environment that's that's structured and uh, holding them accountable and, and it's uncomfortable for them, then they're looking for a way out of it and trying right. to find an easier, softer way. So they'll play their, they'll they'll play this manipulation game with their family. You know, they'll get them on the phone when they get a phone call and they're telling them everything bad about the program. Uh, and, and you need to come get me and there's a better place I can go. And, uh, you know, those those kind of things. But 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 uh, the goal is to manipulate the family uh, to rescue them again. Right. You know, uh, and as long as the family member, the loved one, the spouse, whoever it is, as long as they continue to do that, rescue them. Right. They give them no reason to do anything different. Right. Hmm. Now, if you are tired of being sick and tired, you can always give us a call here at uh, Mission Driven at 833-462-8286. You can visit us online at atctn.org, and right there on the front page, there is a button there that says Get Help Now. You can click on that button, and you can fill out a form, and we will get back to you within 24 hours and see if this program is a great fit for you. Um, But like I said, if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, reach out and we are here for you and you know, top up you know and i love i love uh how you 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 say that to the audience not because it doesn't necessarily simply apply to the person who is in active addiction right. it also applies to the loved one who is dealing with the person who is in a, in active addiction right. how how and why because the loved one has to be get to the place where they're sick and tired of being sick and tired in terms of dealing with this individual very true uh rescuing them uh every time they they are in a negative consequence situation right Uh, they have to get to that place as well that they're sick and tired of being sick and tired of dealing with this and 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 willing to do what it takes uh for lack of better words to kind of force this their loved one to a place where they're willing to get the help they need right and it's, I mean, you're not hurting the the person that's dealing with the addictions hurting, but the person that is um, being affected, to, uh, the loved one that's being affected as well, they're not being affected just emotionally. They could be affected physically, uh, emotionally, and even spiritually and financially because Every they're trying way, to con- continually Every rescuing way. this person. Every it's, way. It's hurting more than what you think. Every way. They, uh, the addict will exhaust the family in every way, financially, emotionally, spiritually, uh, in every way. And, and, and so that's what it, that's what, that's what I mean when I say they got to get to that place where they're sick and tired of being sick and tired, because that, 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 that also lends to them finally realizing you have exhausted me in every way. I'm done. Right. 
Right. I'm done. I love you, but I'm done. Unless you're willing to get some help, I'm done. I'm not rescuing right. you anymore. Right. That addict becomes a, I'm going to call it as a uh, life sucker because they're sucking the life out of everything. They suck themselves it, it, and those exactly. around them. And, you know, and that's why in secular recovery, they refer to addiction as a as a family disease, hmm. uh, because it's not just impacting the addict. And unfortunately, oftentimes the addict has this this uh, irrational mindset of believing that the only person that they're hurting is themselves. Yeah. And so I often say to, to the men in our program that, you know, uh, your behavior, what you do just doesn't impact you. It, impact, it, it impacts everyone who's connected to you, everyone who cares about you. Right. Uh, you're hurting them. You know, and I remind them whether they realize it or not. You know, you had a mother or a spouse or a father that paced the floors many nights wondering where you were, whether you whether you were dead or alive, whether you it, calling hospitals and calling jails uh, to see see if you were there because they needed some peace of mind to know that you were OK yeah. um, while you were out there uh, and focused on only using drugs. Right. I mean, just even having that mindset is just a very selfish mindset anyways. Because oh, everything added. that I do is, is I'm just affecting myself. Yeah. I'm not hurting anybody right. else. Yeah, but you're hurting the ones that love you. Yeah, well, you know, at the core of addiction is self-centeredness. Right. And so the the, the, the addict is driven by their primary uh, want, desire, need to use, whatever that is. Of course, uh, uh, addiction comes both in... Uh, behavioral as well as substance and so whatever the the, the addiction is the, the that's what is driving uh, the addict to do whatever they do uh, right. it's not it's not I don't want to I don't want to make it sound as if the the addicted person doesn't care about their loved ones or their family they do right but the addiction has uh, consumed their lives, their life to the to the extent that it has become unrealistically important in their right. life. It becomes primary. It becomes primary, and 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 so the, even without them wanting to, they put uh, that that addiction before things that they care about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said before, if you are feeling sick and tired of being sick and tired, please reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us by phone number, 833-462-8286. You can send us an email at missiondriven at atctn.org, or you can visit us online at atctn.org, and there's a button right there on the front page that says Get Help Now. Click on that, fill out the form, and you will hear back from us within 24 hours. And like I said, see if that this program is good for you. And even if you are the loved one of the person that's addicted and you're just wanting some help, give us a call send us an email, go online and contact us. We'd really love to hear from you and see what we can do for you. Yeah, you know, and I think we could uh, even wrap this segment up in talking about uh, the importance of the loved one, the person that is 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 dealing with the individual, uh, finding support and finding uh, help for themselves. And I think that's vital to the success of, of the person, whether they're in recovery or whether they are still out there in active addiction, that if you are the person that 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 loves that person and cares about that person, you want to understand, you know, uh, what what do I need to do? First of all, you need to take care of yourself. Right. You need to manage uh, y your own uh, struggles with this effectively uh, so that so that you can focus on how to deal with your loved one that's in active addiction or in recovery. Um, and and not end up in that place of being codependent any longer, uh, not end up an enabler to them. Right. Uh, and, and in order for you to do that, you have to have support. Right. You have to have people helping you process through uh, how to deal with this. Right. Right. And when you're saying you got to take care of yourself, I always think about when I hear that, thinking about the the analogy of being on an airplane when they tell you, Put your face mask on first before you help the person next to you. Right, right, right. Because sometimes if you can't, if you're hurting and you're dying and you're suffocating, there's no way that you can help somebody else. Right, right. So, and like I said, the person that is dealing with the addiction, that the person is around the people that are dealing with addiction and the, addic the person has addiction is, is a life sucker and they're sucking the life out of you, it's going to be harder for you to help them. Absolutely, absolutely. They will drain you to the point that, uh, uh, 
it 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 ends up affecting you emotionally, your health, uh, your mental uh, stability, and if it, you know if you allow it to do that, then how are you going to help right. that person? Even in even even when they are at a point where they're ready to get the help. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for listening and watching Mission Driven this week. Now, if you are struggling or you know somebody that is struggling, please reach out to us. Give us a call at 833-462-8286. Visit us online at atctn.org. This has been a production of Adult and Teen Challenge of Memphis and Middle Tennessee. Uh, Remember, there is hope being free from your addictions.